Hey everyone, welcome back and a very good morning to all of you. I hope you all are doing well. So in this session today, we are going to focus on a very crucial problem that I think uh, we face. So what, uh, what happens is whenever you step into a supermarket or your office, there is usually a security guard or a person who takes your temperature readings and based on these readings, he grants you access to the building. Now this method works completely fine. However, there are certain problems associated with it. Like let us say for instance, once I noticed that the person was taking my temperature reading and he was not or he did not even look at the temperature, he was facing the other way the whole time and he did not even care to look at the reading. So this because a human is doing this, it, it is still this method is still prone to errors. So what we will try to do today is we will try to eliminate all the possible human errors by automating the entire process. So we will have this done automatically. So we will place infrared temperature sensors in the face mask and we will connect them to buzzer and LED light strips to inform us if the temperature of a person is within the normal range, let us say less than 38 degrees or is it greater than that. So without further ado, let us get started. So let us talk a little about the assembly. So assembly is basically a smart lab based out of N5 since December 2014. And over the course of over 6 years, we have provided around 250 free workshops. These workshops are mainly categorized as hack, code and data science workshops. Now hack workshops are the workshops like today's that deal with IoT, embedded systems, hardware, etc. Code workshops on the other hand focus more on software projects like gaming projects, a projects that use APIs or different frameworks. And quite self explanatory data science book, uh, data science workshops are any workshops that are related to machine learning ai etc these workshops come under data science categories now our target audience are students professionals and entrepreneurs but we are more than happy to welcome anyone who is interested in our workshops you can know more about us on our forum which is members.assembly.ae and do not forget to tag us on our social media, uh, connect to us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube using our handles. So how does this entire setup work? Now the most important part of today's workshop is this MLX90614 infrared temperature sensor. So this is, it detects the person's temperature using infrared radiation. This is the same technology that is being used in the temperature guns that we have that the people use to measure temperature in the malls and offices. So it is it has 4 pins the fire, the voltage ground SCL and SDA and the wiring is pretty straightforward and simple and even the code is very straightforward and simple. So we will know more you will know more about this when we go into the wiring and the coding. So the parts list is very simple. So we have the of course the MLX90614 sensor itself. Then we have a buzzer, an LED strip. Uh, so I am using, I will be using a dot matrix uh, strip and then Arduino Uno. So basically you can use any Arduino but I am using Arduino Uno. You can even use Arduino Nano based on how much ever space you have on your face shield or your mask. So regard, I mean about that you can decide on your own which Arduino to use. So this is our wiring diagram and so you can have a look at it or and there is also a link to the wiring diagram in the description below. So you go to the GitHub repositories, you can find all the codes and the wiring diagram there as well. So without further ado, let us get started. All right, so let's start with the wiring. So for the wiring, we have our MLX90614 temperature sensor. 
and our buzzer arduino and finally we have our led strip so we're not going to be using the entire length of the led strip we'll just be using let's say around 30 leds or so and you, for the wiring you want to make sure that there you wire to the end so basically it has two ends so you want to wire the end which has the arrow sign directed in the opposite direction so you don't want to wire to the end which is pointing towards the arrow sign so this is basically point the arrow sign is pointing to my left so in this direction so i'm wiring this end and make sure that you read these names or the wires names properly because sometimes the wire coloring convention can be very wrong on these wires so i had a case in which the ground and the live wire were not black and red and some other wires were black and red and that caused a lot of problems so just make sure that you wire the correct wires so i've also connected them to the jumper cables and leave these two wires apart these are for external power supply because arduino can't power up the entire leds so these are in case if you want to power up all of them you need to connect this to an external 5 volt power supply however we will not be using this in our case so let's begin with the wiring so the first wire in my case is the ground wire i'll go forward and connect it to the ground pin on arduino the second one which is the digital in a di or do pin you're going to connect it to digital pin 11 on arduino then we have the c in ci or co pin which we'll connect to 13 which actually stands for clock in or clock out and the last pin which i have is of course the power so vcc which i'll connect to 5 volts power supply now we're done with the wiring for the LED, LED strip. Now let's wire the uh, MLX infrared sensor. So it has four wires and it has two, one is going to the ground. So I'll just connect ground to ground. Okay. The ground cable goes there. The power I'll give it to 3.3 volt supply on the Arduino board and then these two wires one of them, one of them are, is the SCL which will be connected to the SCL and the other one is the STA which will be connected to SDA. So in case you don't know where the SCL and the SDA pins are they are right above your digital pin 13 so the first two pins in that, that row are these SDA and SCL pins so now we have wired this as well so the final part of our wiring includes this buzzer and this is pretty straightforward it has two wires one is the ground and the other one is the digital pin that we'll use to control it so the black one is the ground which I'll connect to ground so I have a ground available over here I'll connect it there mm. And the other one, I'll connect it to A0, analog pin 0. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the wiring. Now we'll go ahead, open up our Arduino IDs and type in some code for it. So let's begin the coding. So once you've opened up your Arduino ID and created a new project, so let's start now so first things first let's go to the manage libraries tab and make sure that we have the libraries that are required for the led strip so in my case i am using a dot star uh, adafruit dot star led strip so i'll just add those libraries so if you haven't just installed them you go here and click on install and those will be added into your libraries so now what we need to do is we need to include these libraries in our program so we'll say include add a fruit dot, uh, underscore dot star dot h okay and also include spi dot h I 
I think I spelled it wrong or yep I spelled it star so it's capital S because it's supposed to turn orange yeah and we also need to install wire.edge and another library for the MLX90614 sensor so in case if you haven't installed that library as well we must install the Adafruit MLX90614 library for that as well so include okay wire.edge and include MLX okay not Adafruit underscore capital MLX 90614.h and so like I said before we don't want the entire LED strip to light up and that also doesn't is, is not supported by the Arduino itself you need an external power source for that so we'll just use around 30 pixels so we'll create a variable called num pixels and we'll give it a value of 30 and I forgot the define there so define num pixels 30 next we need to initialize the both the our LED strip as well as our sensor so in order to do that first we'll type Adafruit MLX 90 okay 90614 and then just give it a name so I'll just give it MLX equals Adafruit underscore MLX 90614 open and close parentheses semicolon similarly we'll do the same thing for our pixels or the LED strip so it is Adafruit underscore dot star and I'll name it strip so strip and then you have to give in some parameters and these parameters are how many number of pixels you want to be active so I'll just copy it from here num pixels and paste it here and another parameter it takes is dot star so dot star underscore brg so that's it for the setting up now we can go ahead into our setup method so we have done initializing or at least including libraries and stuff so let's start with our setup method so in our setup method what we can do is we can start a serial monitor to see the progress or maybe the temperature or if you want you can just ignore this part this is for debugging if you don't understand uh, where your code is going wrong you can have a serial monitor to check that so the main important things that we have to do is we want to start the sensor so you say mlx.begin or whatever you name your sensor over here I named it mlx so I'll just say mlx.begin also to start the LED strip you need to say strip dot begin and the same goes for this LED strip as well if you name it something else you will have to use that name with dot begin and then strip dot show to refresh the pixels on the LED strip now this is our setup method we'll go to our loop method now now what we will do here is we'll take the we'll keep on taking we'll constantly take the temperature measurements and then we'll check if the temperature is between uh, 32 to 38 or 30 to 38 degrees then we'll give it a green light otherwise we will give it if it is if it is greater than 38 degrees then we'll uh, the LED will bring a red light and along with the sounding of the buzzer so let's start that so we'll create a float to store the temperature values so flow temp equals now to get the temperature we just have to say mlx dot read 
object temperature and the c at the end signifies uh, that we want the temperature in centigrade if you want the temperature in fahrenheit you can just replace the c with f and then you will get the temperature in fahrenheit and plus 3 so this plus 3 is basically to adjust the temperature to calibrate the sensor so whenever you have the sensor you might want to calibrate uh, the sensor with, by confirming the temperature with an actual thermometer so i have done that and it was it was showing me 3 degrees lesser temperature so i added a plus 3 there and one more thing to notice is this temperature measures two types of temperature the object temperature and the ambient temperature so if you want to let's say if you want to calibrate and you want to find the ambient temperature you can use that by saying read ambient temperature and then c or f whatever you want in the temperature in so then what we want to do is we want to initialize so we'll have a color initial color that we want our uh, led strip to use so we'll say u int 32 underscore t space color equals and this is a hexadecimal value so 0x signifies hexadecimal and actually we don't even need this over here so we'll just add it later in the method okay so here what we need to do is we'll add a delay so the temperature measurement will happen after every 500 milliseconds and yep and now we'll check so we have an if statement which checks if the temperature is within some particular range so we'll check if temperature is less than 38 and so these two ampersand sign signify and and temperature is greater than or equal to 32 then so we want to check if the temperature is between 32 to 38 this is just to make sure that the temperature reading that is getting is not the surround temperature reading of the surrounding it's actually a person who's standing in front of him and it's his temperature reading that the sensor is picking up you can change this readings according to your own preferences because if you don't add the temperature is greater than 32 you can or add a button to that the person presses every time he wants the temperature to be taken or if even if you don't do that then what you'll end up getting is the LED, green LED will keep on I mean it will always be green unless and until there is a person who has a temperature that is greater than 38 so we don't want that so that's why we did this and then it will call a method which is normal temp so we'll don't worry we'll go ahead and create this method as well so for for time being just understand that if a temperature is between the normal range it will call a temperature it will call a sorry method and if it is not then so else if the temperature is greater than or equal to 38 then we'll call another method which is abnormal temperature abnormal temp all right so we're done with our loop methods now the last few things that we want to do is we want to create these two methods normal temperature and abnormal temperature so void normal temp and in the normal temperature we'll define the color that we were defining before so u in 32 underscore t color equals 0x ff 0000 so this is our initial color and then we'll create a for loop to switch on all the leds with this this color or green color one by one so we'll create a for loop for that so for and i 
is equal to 0 i is less than 31 because we are using or i is less than 30 and then i plus plus and 30 because we used 30 pixels over here so that's why and now what we want to do is we want to add this we want to switch on the led so at that particular location so we'll say strip dot set pixel color and it takes two parameters one is the location so the location will be our iterator i and the second one is the color so we'll just pass in the color variable which stores our actual color in this case it's green and so how this color is it's actually green red and blue grb so the first two values being ff means 255 so the green is so if you know how these colors work so the green has a maximum value so 255 others red and blue have the value of zero which signifies which signifies that the color that will be shown on the led strip will be green so once we've done that we'll just say strip dot show semicolon and we'll add a delay so we want that led to turn on be turned on for at least two seconds so that the user can see whether his temperature is correct or not and then we want to call another method which is turn off so this will essentially just turn off the leds and let's go ahead that's it for our normal temperature method now let us create the other method which is the abnormal temperature so that's pretty much simple or pretty much very similar to the previous one so i'll just copy that one itself okay i need to spell abnormal correctly yeah so abnormal temperature and then i'll just copy the code within normal temperature and paste it over here now there are a few things that we want i mean just one thing i guess what we want to change is so instead of the color being 0x ff0000 we will change it to green being 0 and then red being ff so this way red light will light up and this is our this is done and one more thing that we need to do additionally over here is to sound the alarm so we want to say tone and then pass in three arguments so which are a0 a0 being the pin that we uh, what you call allocated for the buzzer and these are the other two parameters and that's it i guess yep that's pretty much it we don't need anything else in this method now last part of our code is to create the turn off method so we'll do that quickly turn off and the code over here is also pretty much very similar to the other ones so i'll just go ahead and copy the normal temperature code again and paste it in here so the only difference is again the color values instead of red or green it's now all zeros signifying that the color the leds should not be turned on and then it will turn off all the leds one by one and of course we don't need to call the turn off method and we don't need to call the delay as well so yeah that's it so let's verify our code okay we have some errors ml okay i spelled it wrong d is supposed to be small and not capital other than that uh, okay i forgot the semicolon as well so it's still compiling i guess we don't have any other errors yep it's done compiling and we'll now what we'll do is we'll connect our arduino and our entire setup 
to the laptop and then we'll upload this code onto it. Okay, so now that now I have uploaded the code onto the Arduino board and let's actually see this in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this sensor, the infrared sensor near to my head and you guys can most probably see the LED strip light up over here. So let's give it a try. Yep. So you, as you can see, when I place it close to my forehead, so assuming that someone who is wearing the mask would uh, go to a person or the person will be standing in front of him, that's what will happen if the temperature of the person is normal. It will turn green. The LED strip will turn green. Now just to mimic what would happen if a person with a higher temperature entered or the sensor temperature the sensor sensed a higher temperature reading i'll just rub my finger against my clothes and then place it above the sensor just to mimic hot temperature so let's see what happens as you could see when the temperature was greater than 38 the leds turned on red and the buzzer sounded an alarm so this way it's great and quite helpful for the person who's checking the temperature as well it gives him an indication that if there is an alarm sounding or if the leds are green he should allow or not allow the people to go so i hope you guys enjoyed it and this is it for today so now the final piece of all this is attaching this all together to the face shield itself so i have the face shield over here now i'll just attach all the components to it and then we can see how it looks like so here is our final product this is what it looks like once it's all assembled and everything but you can also have this you have you can have this kind of arrangement you can have any other kind of arrangement that you prefer and uh, one more thing that i would suggest is to have an uh, external power bank or a 9 volt battery connector and 9 volt batteries to power this thing up because you can't carry a laptop everywhere with it so when you are taking it out you need to have an external power source as well and let me just quickly show you how this works so we have the mlx sensor in between the buzzer right over here and then we have the arduino boards and all the wires on the back side and of course we have that led strip here so let me just place my head in front of the bring my head in front of the sensor and see what reading does it give yeah so when i get closer to the uh, sensor it shows me a green light signaling that my temperature is normal so that's it for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed the video and do give do give this video a thumbs up if you liked it also share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you will never ever miss any of our interesting workshop until next time this is amar signing off see you bye bye